Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Right after huge Supreme Court travel ban win, Trump stuck it to Dems with how he celebrated. President Donald Trump just stuck it to the Democrat haters like a rusty thumbtack in a piece of old rotten chicken. The President of the United States celebrated a Supreme Court victory and rubbed it like salt on a slug. The President doesn't hold back when it comes to him voicing his opinion and slapping people with some wordplay on Twitter. After all, Twitter seems to be Trump's favorite form of getting the word out, so when the Supreme Court ruled to uphold portions of his travel ban, then, of course, he hopped on his device and smashed the buttons to remind people who the boss is now. Tony Don saw will have to take a step back because Trump might be taking over as the new boss these days. Let's keep in mind that Trump's travel ban is not exactly a ban, but increased steps in security to help ensure that safe people come to America while unsafe people are filtered out. Calling it a travel ban is much easier than saying something long-winded like travel restrictions, hard, right? Of course, it is. We're a country of cutting things the short and easy way. We're also a country of calling things the more provocative term, so travel ban just sounds more interesting than something so basic and simple such as travel restrictions which we all go through on a daily basis and don't even realize it. Can you take a 40 ounce of liquid on the plane? No, because it's restricted, right? All those flavors and Trump's haters choose to be salty. He may as well dump a little bit of salt on those wounds and hand his opponents a tissue. The Supreme Court on Tuesday upheld President Trump's controversial travel ban affecting several mostly Muslim countries, offering a limited endorsement of the president's executive authority on immigration in one of the hardest-fought battles of this term. The 5-4 ruling marks the first major high court decision on a Trump administration policy. It upholds the selective travel restrictions, which critics called a discriminatory Muslim ban but the administration argued was needed for security reasons. In a written statement, Trump called the ruling a tremendous victory for the American people and the Constitution. As critics continued to decry the policy as xenophobic, Trump described the court decision as a moment of profound vindication following months of hysterical commentary from the media and Democratic politicians who refused to do what it takes to secure our border and our country. Trump's celebratory tweet was enough to get people fired up. There were immediate hateful and spiteful messages sent as a reply to this message, as is the case with many of Donald Trump's messages on Twitter. People love to hate the guy. One of the people who seem to constantly badger the president is a verified account of a man who claims to be a doctor. It's unknown if he still practices medicine, but it appears as though he's constantly getting on Trump's case when he should have been paying more attention to his career and helping to save lives or make discoveries in medicine. It's a shame when someone would waste time on Twitter arguing with people when they could be making people's lives better. Trump only needed one wow. To get people thrown off their course for the day. One little tweet is all it takes to break the brittle crumbs who oppose Trump and hate everything he does. It doesn't make any sense why people are so spiteful towards him when Supreme Court voted in his favor. No matter what Trump does, it will not ever be enough to please everyone. Trump is no different than any other president in that regard. Every president will always have people who simply do not like him no matter what. It's just the way of life for a president, however, Trump seems to have a lot more hateful and violence-inducing people than most presidents in recent history. It's absurd to see what people are doing out of their own misery and hate. People like Maxine Waters seem to be calling for violence when they're supposed to be representing the party of tolerance. It's very odd that the party who constantly demands everyone else to be tolerant always seems to be the most intolerant. They don't realize that it's okay to have different beliefs and it's acceptable to support the president. Of course, Trump isn't their guy, so they're slowly becoming the party of intolerance. Maybe they can have a pity party once a month in a safe space to cry on each other's shoulders as everyone else carries on with their day and enjoys life. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.